You want to see it? Check that out. That is a shockingly blue color. It just doesn't look natural. You can see why Appetite fooled people for years. My favorite food recently? I've been making burritos out of everything. Oh, leftover fried rice? Put it in a tortilla. Making hummus? It's just chickpeas and tahini and garlic and olive oil and paprika. I am often confused with other geological species. In fact, my name comes from a word that means to deceive. Okay, I think I've got it. So, I've got a hunch, I believe. Well, let, okay, let me, re, let me confirm. Oh, that didn't help. Here was my first guess. I was gonna say appetite. I feel like I remember reading from somewhere that it, it was kind of transliterated from Greek for the word to deceive or be deceived by and that's because people confuse appetite for like topaz and barrel and things like that. And it doesn't help that it's hexagonal because tell me that doesn't look like aquamarine. I'm gonna move, gosh, see that does look like a little topaz. It's really pretty blue too. It looks like a little Jolly Rancher. Is this why we were talking about food at the beginning? <laughs> Got me talking about burritos. I love burritos. All right, I've received confirmation that these are in fact appetite. This guy comes from Brazil, as does the smaller Jolly Rancher. This appetite specimen, which I, might be my favorite just because of how appetizing, and by appetizing I mean deceiving, it is because it really does look like a little hexagonal barrel crystal. This one comes from Portugal. Portugal and Brazil share a lot of common things, one of which is their language, and the other apparently is their appetite specimens. Let's start in the south of the map and work our way north, starting with the Brazilian specimens. These guys both come from the Bahia mine in Brazil, which is kind of interesting because one of the stones that this can sometimes be mistaken for is Paraíba tourmaline, which also comes from Brazil. Because of a shortage of Paraíba tourmaline, it is one of the most sought after gemstones in the world, but there's not a whole lot of it and it's prohibitively expensive. So a lot of people are looking to blue appetites to sort of simulate that electric blue Paraíba color. Brazil produces all kinds of gemstones, like the Paraíba tourmaline that I mentioned, obviously this appetite that we've got in front of us, but also it's renowned for its emeralds. Gemstone production in Brazil goes back all the way to the 1500s, and they're really well known for a broad variety of gemstones. Tourmaline, topaz, appetite. This one looks like it's growing in a, oh, I might be wrong about this, but the eye test tells me that this is calcite that it's growing with. You guys ready? Strap in, we're gonna do some appetite stats, speed stats, spapetites. So Appetite has a hardness of five. It comes in kind of low on the Mohs scale, but it's still used in jewelry because the color is wonderful. But that does mean that usually it's mounted in more protective settings, maybe not in a ring, but you could probably pull off uh, Appetite earrings or get away with an Appetite necklace. I think that would be quite attractive. So I know that the three specimens that we have here are all a lovely shade of blue, but Appetite actually can come in a variety of colors. It can be pink, yellow, green, colorless, brown, whatever your appetite, there's a flavor for you. Appetite comes in all of those colors and the colors are usually due to the presence of rare earth elements or irradiation, which is why you have such a variety of possible colors. And in fact, it's such a good copycat. Appetite for a long time was mistaken for topaz, barrel, aquamarine, emerald if your appetite happened to be green. This clever punny name was given by a man named A.G. Werner in the 1780s, and he transliterated the Greek word for to deceive or be deceived by, because up until that point, appetite had just been fooling gemologists around the world. There are plenty more interesting things to say about appetite, but there are plenty more boxes to unbox, so let's do that. Ooh. See, now I, I totally get why this is such a deceptive stone because this looks nothing like the last thing. Neither does this. I was gonna say that this maybe looked like an emerald but it doesn't have the right, the hexagonal structure. So these are both really great, but let's talk about this one first. So this is not the appetite. This is the appetite down in the corner. It's this kind of golden green collection of crystals here. And it is resting in a bed of calcite and fluorite. So the purple stuff is fluorite in here and the paler stuff is calcite. This specimen comes from Wilberforce, Ontario. Beyond that, we don't really know the specifics of where it was found locality wise. But the only other specimens that we've seen that look like this, very much like this one, came from construction sites. So we don't know if it came from that construction site or if it came from a mine, but we do know it came from Canada. So this one is on calcite and fluorite. The other one I have with me today is Appetite 
just on calcite. I love the crystal shape of this. It's just kind of protruding from the host rock is really neat. You love to see things like that. This is how you draw crystals in cartoons, you know? So anytime you see one like this in real life, and even this little guy over here, it's exciting to see. Love to see the crystal protrude from the host rock. That's always really cool to see. That's how I would like draw a crystal if I was like in elementary school or something. Apatite is the name of a mineral group, but it is also kind of a generic term for a group of something called phosphates. You may have heard of phosphates. You've probably heard of fertilizer. One of the main components of fertilizer is phosphates. Fertilizer is not that interesting, but it is critically important because we as a globe grow a lot of crops. And to grow a lot of crops, you need a lot of fertilizer. And to make a lot of fertilizer, you need a lot of phosphate rocks. So thank Appetite for fulfilling your appetite, feeding you. <laughs> so while that last specimen came from Canada, this one also comes from Canada, specifically Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada is a, a large province in Canada and it covers one million square kilometers. One million square kilometers comes out to roughly 386,000 square miles for all you Americans out there. They produce quite a lot of gemstones and in fact are the world's main supplier of blue sodalite. And in particular, one hot spot up there in the Great White North is Bancroft. Within 50 miles of that little spot, 1,600 different mineral specimens from that place. All right, we've got another box here. Presumably appetite within. Oh, look at this guy. Ooh, okay, it's green again, but it's a very different shade of green, and actually this is probably the color that I'm most familiar with seeing appetite. I feel like I recognize this stone from the SGR. I think there's a photo of it in there somewhere. Speaking of appetite, do you wanna guess what the nickname for this kind of short yellow-green terminated crystal structure is of appetite? They call it asparagus stone. It's a really unique and beautiful color. Yellowish green, love the termination on it. Some people might not like to see all of the fractures on the inside of it that kind of warp and distort your view through an otherwise very transparent crystal. But I kind of like that. It sort of plays tricks on you like Appetite is wont to do. It also diffracts the light a little bit. So you get a little bit of rainbow action going on when you rotate it from the right direction. While we're talking about inclusions, some of the things that you might want to look out for if you're collecting Appetite are inclusions of a mineral called actinolite. You've also got possibility for two phase inclusions, which would be a cavity with some form of liquid and a little gas bubble on the inside, so like think of, you know, an old-fashioned level with a little bubble that slides and tell you when things are level. Some gemstones can have two-phase inclusions, apatite is one of them. And also negative crystals, which is where you've got kind of the shape of a crystal where it used to be, but instead it is no longer occupied by that crystal. So you have a crystal shape of just space, negative space, so negative crystal. You wanna see it? Check that out, are you kidding me? I wouldn't blame anyone for thinking that that was topaz. Wow, that is a shockingly blue color. It just doesn't look natural. Oh, I'd love to loop this. It looks like there's a bunch of little tiny sparkles on the inside. Look at that thing, it's incredible. You can see why Appetite fooled people for years. Don't get it twisted, a stone of this size is still gonna cost you, but it's not going to cost you nearly as much as a Paraiba tourmaline this big. We've got one more coming. It's the biggest one yet. Put her there. Whoa! Oh gosh, there's so much going on here. This specimen is, besides being large, has three different minerals on it. At least apparent and obvious minerals to my eye. We've got the apatite in pink. We've got muscovite, a form of mica, over here with these little sheets, these thin little plates of mica. And uh, albite, which is the white stuff in between. I love the variety of colors here, and yet another color that Appetite can be, this really soft pink. With its six sides, my first thought, if I didn't know I was already looking at Appetite, would be that these were maybe rose quartz crystals. This particular specimen comes from the Gilgit district in Pakistan, and that's really cool because it's difficult to get to. It's very remote, and the fact that we've got such a large piece of that spot here in front of us today is really neat. It's really lustrous, the Appetite. It's got a lot of reflection, a lot of the light is bouncing back to me. And these are just rough crystals. I love how the hexagonal crystals also have little steps at the top, the angle up at the top. None of these have terminations. We did see termination points in the asparagus stone, but nonetheless beautiful. And of course, you too, Muscovite, you look great. All right, we saw a lot of cool appetite specimens today, but let's take a closer look at this wildly blue faceted stone.
Well guys, I hope today your appetite for knowledge has been sated. I know mine has. We saw a lot of cool specimens, and that's only the tip of the iceberg as far as colors, crystal structures, and minerals that appetite can actually form along with. We got this idea from the comments section, I'm pretty sure, on one of our previous videos, so keep leaving us comments about what other minerals you'd like us to see, and we'll see if we've got some we can show you. But until then, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.